God's will. What you're seeking is a blessing from God. You must expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Life Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson. Good to have you guys here today. And you know, we're going to hit a topic that everybody can benefit from, and it's this idea of hope. And you know, we've talked about this in the last year and a half with the people, but it's not just COVID. I mean, you know, geez, just this last weekend, you know, I know our vets right now, a lot of them are feeling really down. Uh, families that, have, that, that lost. There's a sense in the world, and I know in our nation right now, of hopelessness. And that is not, that's not from, there is a source of hope. Uh, and maybe it's not something as earth shattering as, you know, some of the thing in your life. Um, a transition, a job change, uh, a broken relationship. You know, there's a lot of things that, that just in this world, where do we look for hope? Where do we find hope? What does it even look like? Can we get it again? Those are all, I think, very important questions. They have core. And so today, we're going to talk about hope. In fact, there's a new book out just out this week from Leanna Tankersley. And some of you will recognize her name from uh, Mops International, of course, the, the Moms Unscripted podcast, and then Leanna's podcast called Beginning Again, uh, but the called Hope Anyway. And, you know, <laughs> sometimes you kind of got, you have to go at it like that. You have to say, you know what? I know the world is trying to drag me down and situations are coming against me, but I'm going to hope that you guys to be a part of the conversation. Good time to hit share early right now. If you're watching us live, uh, we always appreciate you here and the replay as well. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Randy. Well, let's kind of start at the, the, the top of... Uh, this idea of hope anyway, and, and say, why why the topic? I mean, in the light of the pandemic, it can seem kind of obvious, but are there other things going on that made you want to address this topic? Absolutely. And I, I love the way that you introduced this idea that it we are having layers of difficulty in the world right now. We have headlines that are bombarding us with catastrophe. Uh, I think we're all kind of holding our breath to see what the fall is gonna look like in our lives with COVID kind of reemerging. And we're also dealing with our own personal struggles. And the background, the context for me with this book is, is um, in 2017, I found out unexpectedly that my marriage of 15 years was ending. Mm. And it's not what I wanted and it's not, um, what I even expected. If, if you've ever been blindsided by something, this was a this was a, a blindsiding experience. Mm. And yet there was this part of me, and I believe this is due to my faith, but there was this part of me that just truly believed that circumstances, there was something in me that was deeper and more resilient than these, these horrible and difficult circumstances. And I wanted to write about that. And I wanted to talk about this idea of hope because I don't believe and research shows us that being a person of apathy or cynicism, that's not who we want to be. And as you said, that's not from God. So I went about exploring what it looks like to hold on to hope anyway, even after, and especially in the midst of great loss. Well, take us a bit on your journey. Uh, tell us what you found. Yeah. So the biggest thing, one of the biggest things I found is that First of all, we use the word hope uh, in a lot of contexts that I wanted to kind of define my terms early on in the book. I, you know, I, I hope the Padres win the World Series or mm -hmm. I hope it snows this Christmas or, you know, I hope that I can get this outfit that I want or whatever it is. And it's really more akin to wishing. And so then when things happen in our lives that the outcome doesn't go the way that we wanted, the way that we prayed for, the way that we had hoped for, we say, well, hope's no good. Mm. So what I wanted to explore is that real hope is not contingent on outcomes. And real hope is not all about hoping for a certain product. It's more about investing in a process. And so that's a lot of what I explore in the book. There's, I have 27 chapters in the book, and it's all these things that I realized I could invest my hope in and they would hold. 
Uh, so, you know, I think that's the first thing right off the bat that I found that so much of us believe that hope is just all about hoping for something. And we need to remember, but it's about hoping in. Yeah. And I think you're going to have to go a little deeper on that one, because I know that, um, you know, I mean, so with my four children, uh, one of them just got married last year and, um, I hope that she has a a happy, uh, marriage that they, you know, put God first, that the two become one. I mean, I, I have all these hopes for an outcome and I think they're a right and godly outcome. Yeah. Um, Hmm. And and I can see how if something went wrong, that could maybe destroy the hope. Uh, but I I think you're right, and that we do hope for an outcome. But that's not always wrong. Help just help me understand no. where you're going with that. Yeah, I love. I think that's a great point. That no, hoping for certain things. Of course, we all have desires, right? We have deep desires. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think about the woman who might be listening right now or watching that really wants a baby. Mm-hmm. And that desire hasn't been fulfilled, you know, and there's nothing wrong with wanting that, especially the, the God-given desires of our hearts. What's hard, I think, and what I'm really addressing here is what happens when that doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, do we uh, do we say hope is not worth it anymore and we abandon it? Or do we have to come up with a new way of thinking about hope in our lives? Because as I said, I do believe that we were built and meant and created to hold hope. Uh, that's part of what faith is. Uh, but how do we do that? And, you know, in my situation, I think particularly, and I know a lot of people's situations, it it didn't end up the way I wanted. Mm. It didn't come back together. I we it, I wasn't able to fix it or repair it. it. It The outcome was not what I wanted. And yet I still realized that I was not abandoned. God had not turned his, his face and his love away from me, even in the midst of this process. And so this is what I'm getting at is that, no, there's nothing wrong with saying these are the desires of my heart. Mm. But what happens if we feel disappointment? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, actually, I think I could make the case that you don't really need hope when everything's going well. <laughs> it's, <laughs> right. it's really when things fall apart that, that you have to have hope. And, you know, I know most people watching this program, they're, they're Christians, um, and, and they understand our idea of hope coming from God. Do you, uh, and I'm certain that I, well, I would guess that with your audience, oftentimes you're talking to people who are not followers of Christ. And we're, I, I don't know where I would tell somebody to get hope when everything yeah. seems to fall apart out, outside of God. I just have no answer other than God. What, what do you say to people in that yeah. situation? No, you're 100% right. That if we think that our own resources, our own resilience, our own big ideas, our own strategies are going to be the things that carry us through, especially when things go sideways, it's just a bankrupt system. We can get so far and some of us can actually get pretty far. You know, some of us might be really strong or really talented or have a lot of resources at our disposal, maybe. But at some point, and I think we see this with people, it runs out Mm. and we need something beyond what just what we possess within ourselves. And so in my life, you know, that is my faith. That has been, and someone asked me uh, just about a year after I went through my divorce, they said, did this loss and this heartbreak cause you to lose your faith? And I thought that was an interesting question, you know, and and I said, actually, uh, no, the opposite. Uh, It actually deepened my faith because it gave me an opportunity. As you said, when things are like smooth sailing, Mm -hmm. do we really need God? You know, doesn't feel like it sometimes, yeah. Doesn't feel like it sometimes, or we can just get kind of lazy or neglect that relationship. When when we're in the dark, we're reaching out and we're saying, you know, as they say, there's no atheists in foxholes. That's a real experience for me. Yeah. You know, I was in a foxhole and it's like, you realize that uh, you, where you need to reach. And, and so, yes, for me, my faith is what produced hope in these situations. And specifically, and I, I kind of, chronicle these throughout the book, but the little nudges, the little whispers, the still small voice of God Hmm. that visited me when I was in my darkest days and never let me go and kept reminding me of the things that I needed to remember in order to move forward. You know, I always say there's always a hand reaching toward you. Mm -hmm. That's like my definition of faith. There's always a hand Mm -hmm. reaching toward you. So we got to look for it. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to be willing to reach back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I like that. You know, I'm curious, even as a, as a believer, and, and I hear what you're saying, 
but maybe for some people who haven't experienced it or don't recognize it or frankly don't believe in it, when you say that still small voice of God, that nudge, mm-hmm. tell us what that looks like. Hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. For me, uh, I have to get pretty quiet, right? Because the louder voices are all of the uh, drama and trauma that's happening around us all day, every day. The, uh, the voices that are telling us to do more and be more. And then also, I don't know about you, but I have an internal critic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think most people do. <laughs> and that voice is awfully loud. And so I think what it takes for me to hear that still small voice is it's not often the loudest voice. It's not yelling above everything else. So it requires me to get still and quiet so I can hear it. Sometimes that means going for a walk in the woods out behind my house. Sometimes it just means sitting quietly in the morning uh, when I'm having my coffee. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be fancy or special or like a weekend retreat to the mountains. It's just that that few minutes a day when we just kind of close our eyes and say, God, is there anything you wanna say to me? And that's how I always start. God, is there anything you wanna say to me today? And, and then I listen. And that still small voice is often comes and it's not condemning. It'll convict us, right? But it's not like, well, you're an idiot for doing this and look what you've done now. Like if you're hearing that, that's not God. The still small voice is showing us the next place to put our foot. It's saying, I'm with you. It's saying, I love you. Yeah, and I think that's, you know that, you know that, I think, because you know scripture. Yes, And I think for people that don't know scripture, it can be very confusing as to what's, what's God, what's my own head, maybe even what's, you know, a spirit other than God, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Or just the world. Um, you, how long have you been a Christian? I'm just curious. Oh, since I was a young child. Okay. I grew up in the church and uh, grew up with the Bible. Uh, you know, my mom was an English teacher, a high school English teacher, and I always say, like, her favorite text <laughs> is the Bible, yeah. you know, so I grew up with it. And it's, it is certainly in me. Yeah, it is okay. In okay. It's in, and I, I think I can tell um, when you were going through your divorce, when things, mm-hmm. when you needed hope the most, how mm-hmm. much did what you heard and what you learned from Scripture growing up and through into adulthood, how much of that came back to play? It's huge. And one scripture right now comes to mind. I, I'll say it uh, from memory, and it's from Lamentations 3. Hmm. Sometimes we hear in this passage, the part of the passage that says his mercies are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. That's a beautiful part of that passage. But before that, it says this simple phrase, because of God's great love, we are not consumed. Mm. I have held on to that with two tight hands for the last few years because of God's great love, we are not consumed. You know, we can go through circumstances that feel completely consuming. And I have. I have three, I had three small children when I was going through this. And it wasn't only walking myself through it, it was walking them through this loss and through this change and transition. And there's people out there that are listening, they, they get this. They know that these circumstances can feel a, a financial collapse. They can feel consuming. Yeah. What a promise. Because of God's great love, we are not consumed. I would just pray that over myself on those days where I felt anxious or unsure about the future, worried about money or whatever it was. I am not meant to live consumed. And it's God's love that stands, lead blocks for me. You know, he's the offensive line. He leads, (laughs) he lead blocks for me. So yeah, scripture has been, scripture has floated back to me at times and in ways that I, um, I never would have expected. Yeah, that's beautiful. We're talking to Leanna Tankersley. I want to show you her website. This is it. LeannaTankersley.com. You can see how to spell her name. Just spell it like that and add .com and you will see her photo sitting there. And you can also find resources, uh, links to uh, the podcast and uh, obviously ways to buy the book. Uh, the book is out just as of this week. It's called Hope Anyway. And that's what we're talking about. And I, I'm, I'm curious... When you were looking for hope um, and having grown up in the church, but yet fighting, uh, you know, you're what in Virginia, um, so you have a <laughs> Democrat governor, not to get political, but so your <laughs> lockdown was probably pretty, pretty serious, um, mm-hmm. which cut a lot of people off from other Christians, from the church, yes. from the gathering and things like that. But have you found hope through other 
people, through community, through fellowship with other Christians? Absolutely. What a great question. I feel like this is essential, especially when we're in a dark night of the soul in our own stories. It's essential. You know, when we go through loss or pain or grief, it's isolating by nature. And, and sometimes we feel like we're the only one. And so it's, it's important in those times more than any to reach out and to see when those people that we love are reaching toward us. Mm -hmm. And about 15 years ago, actually, Randy, I, I, decided that I wanted to do life with a group of women who could really show up, who were really serious about their faith and who were really serious about being there for each other. And I, I just handpicked this group of women and I had no idea. Uh, I had no way of knowing what my story was going to be and how it would unfold. But I can tell you right now, I was on a Zoom with all those women this week. I can tell you that these women surrounded me like a group of warriors and they would not let me dissolve mm. into the loss of this. And so I've also had an incredibly supportive family. I've been surrounded by beautiful people so much of my life. And I know everyone isn't, but the, for those of you who aren't, it's so important. It's so important to reach out and um, yeah. and also to look for that hand that's reaching for, towards you, as we said. Sometimes it can come in, in Odd community can come to us in odd, unexpected ways too, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you know, if you, you know the scripture, so you know that God has a real habit of working through people. You know. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think He does that on purpose, which is great because He works through imperfect people too, which is me and, and probably you, which gives, <laughs> no, gives us some hope, has, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. I think about that story in the upper room when Jesus appears to His disciples after His resurrection. And they say, well, how do we know it's you? How do we know it's really you? You know, you died. How do we know this isn't just a ghost? I love this. He doesn't say, because I'm resurrected, because I'm God, he shows them his hands mm -hmm. and he shows them his side and he shows them his wounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think God needs perfect. I think God needs us to be honest about our stories and to hold those out to each other and say, look, I've been through hard things too, just like Jesus did. And say, this is how people connect to us. It's not through our perfectly slick exteriors, like we think, you know, our perfectionism. Mm -hmm. It's through It's through this. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And then, you know, I know you know that you find that, that we can provide hope. And I want to ask you about that. But first, I want to show people real quick how right now you guys watching can help provide hope and that is the ongoing outreach uh, that we call water for life where we drill these water wells around the world uh, i'm going to mention this a lot pretty pretty much every day because this is close to my heart I, i've been to these places and i have seen the desperation and i've seen the simplicity of the solution and so if you guys feel compelled to join us in our, our effort to bring hope to people around the world all you have to do to, is today is go to lifetoday.org slash live you will see water for life there how you can be a part and there is no small part uh, and you can also be a big part so um, consider going to the website lifetoday.org slash live see how you can be an instrument of god's hope today and liana i know through what you do and what you're doing right now you have realized what it's like to be the one to bring the hope to people. What are you seeing as you bring your message of hope and God's hope to people? Oh, I hope so. I hope that's true. What I'm seeing is that people are, in fact, as we were just talking about, very isolated. People are isolated. And I think that's because of the last year we've been through. I think it's because of fear. Um, I think it's because our world has gotten interrupted. And so I, it's, you know, people are isolated. But um, what I'm seeing is that if we will intentionally invest in the community and the people around us, our communities of faith, if we'll intentionally invest in our faith, just like we talked about scripture, taking a minute to hear the voice of God, we can put hope in those things and they will hold. Hmm. And if we can treat ourselves maybe a little nicer, <laughs> you know, I think when I'm going through a hard time, it's easy for me to be really hard on myself. And right now we are all going through a hard time collectively. Our nervous systems are kind of going nuts. It's hard to focus. It's hard to think. 
Uh, I had a friend tell me yesterday, she drove away from the gas pump with the gas uh, <laughs> in, nozzle in her car and ripped the whole thing off. She's just distracted, you know, because of, because we're all feeling the tension of these times. And so, uh, yeah, I think we just need to come back to the basics and remember that um, we can come around, sit next to ourselves and have some compassion for ourselves and, and not bully and badger ourselves through all this. And then remember too, that our faith and our communities, these are places where we can put our hope, no matter how um, the endings go, no matter what outcome shows up. And I believe that it's not just words. I really believe that. Well, because you've lived it, you know. That's right. So I, I have noticed though, that when people are going through the very difficult things, um, the, the hardest points, it can be actually an uncomfortable message for someone to show up and go, oh, but there's hope. And especially when you start yeah. talking about God, their eyes just roll sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, or even if they're Christians, they know what they're feeling, and they, but they also know what they've been taught or what they even confess to believe. But there's this tension there's this, yeah. this we just kind of don't like it. Did you experience any of that? Or have you experienced it when you're talking to other people? Yeah. And I, of course, I'm trying really hard in this book to not put a big fat red bow on tragedy and sadness, because I don't think people need that message either. Like, oh, this is so simple. Just pray a couple prayers and right. everything will be fixed in your life. Like right. that is definitely not the tone of this book. And it's definitely not my own experience. I had to go through the wilderness. Mm. And I love scripture for this too. Like there's a model of, of relying on God and his provision in the wilderness in scripture. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I wasn't promised smooth sailing. You know, I, one quote that I love, it's from Barbara Brown Taylor. And she, um, she wrote a book called Learning to Walk in the Dark. And she's a beautiful spiritual writer. And this is her quote. She says, um, new life starts in the dark whether it's a seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, or Jesus in the tomb, hmm. new life starts in the dark. And so in a lot of ways, I have lived that, that the seeds for new life didn't come from these gorgeous shining moments. They came in the darkness. And I do have to say, that's not the best news. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? like, right. as, as humans, we don't we don't want someone to tell us that, that, hey, the darkness has gifts for you. The wilderness has gifts for you. But I just find so many times throughout scripture that the, these are the stories that get our attention and stay with us. It's, it's the disciples on the sea when the storm comes up and they say, Jesus, where the heck are you? You know, why are sure. you why are you asleep at the yeah, switch? Right. So I, I guess what I've also realized is that talking about this topic has allowed people to be honest about where they feel doubt, where they feel apathy, where they feel hopeless, and where they've had disappointment with God. And it's a good place for us to start. I, you know, and I, I really appreciate you saying that because I think that's key. Sometimes we're afraid to say that. People will think, oh, well, I thought they were a strong Christian, but listen to what they're saying. I, we have to start there. We have to be open about it. Yes. Yes. I, you can look at all scripture and it'll, you'll, you will see people constantly looking at Jesus and saying, and looking at God and saying, are you sure? Right. <laughs> right, right. No, that, what? the thing is, is, is that's what opens the door. Um, and you know, you, you also alluded to the, what I, I think of as a process of working through these mm -hmm. things. And, you know, we all know Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. But the idea when you when you dissect that and you say, okay, there's there's death. It's not to deny that it's not there, that it's not real, whether it's literal or whether whether it's the death of a marriage, right? Yes. Um, yes. They're the death of hopes and dreams, and those are valleys. Scripture yes. acknowledges that that's a low place. Yeah. But it's the shadow, and there is no shadow without a light. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that valley, we have to walk through it. But the good news is that you will walk through it. In other words, you will walk out of the darkness and into the light eventually, if you just keep walking. That's and, right. And I, and I see that. Mm -hmm. uh, the process, what, what did you learn in that process with it, mm -hmm. whether it's we call, you know we look at it as a valley or a wilderness because yeah. these are the learning places i mean i'm guessing that's where most of this book came from right 
A hundred percent. That's where a hundred percent of this book came from. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think this is, this is so good because first of all, we have to normalize that maybe sometimes we think that people of faith or people that have a really robust faith should never go through the valley of the shadow mm -hmm. of death, right? Mm -hmm. Should never be in the darkness. And we need to normalize that this is a human experience. This happened to Jesus. He was in the garden saying, uh, is there any other way here? Because this is not really what I want to be doing, mm -hmm. you know? And so normalizing that these storms, these wilderness experiences, the darkness, having to surrender to a plan we don't understand, this is part of being human and especially a part of being a human who, um, who is in touch with their faith and is trusting something outside of them. I think another thing I learned in the process not only is it normal, I didn't do something. I mean, sometimes we do do things that there are consequences to our actions, but a lot of times life happens. And so I, I learned that, yeah, this is, this is part of life, disappointments, downturns. Yeah. I also learned that I needed professional help. <laughs> and oh, I, I say that, that I yeah, that. I just say it yeah. honestly, you know, that I was never going to be able to just join hands with my friends or my mom or whoever, or pet my dog and um, and listen to enough worship music and completely get through this. And so I also really am a huge proponent of, do you need a counselor? Do you need a therapist? Do you need a spiritual director? Mm -hmm. Who can enter into this with you? Because when we're in the valley, as you said, we can't see how long it's going to take to exit. Right. Right? Right. right. Like, is this going to be a week, a month, a year, the rest of my life? And so someone who is a wise, empathetic guide can help us know where to put our next step and help us keep moving. As you said, we got to keep walking. Mm -hmm. And so we need someone who's who's um, who's trained, I believe. Yeah, sure. You know, I, I had a therapist through a lot of this time to help me keep moving. And grief is actually something that will help us keep moving if yep. we participate in it, right? Yep. So I write a lot about grief in the book too, but it's when we get into this place of despair where we can get really stuck. Mm. So I learned a little bit about that too, that grieving and crying and being devastated is okay. Sitting in despair indefinitely will keep us stuck. So, and then, yeah, I also just, this, this is the last thing I'll say. I learned that rebuilding is possible. I'm not... My life isn't perfect, but I have rebuilt my life since this tragedy. And um, I think that's an important message. It's the hardest work a person will ever do, but rebuilding is possible. Yep. And that fits the title of your podcast, Beginning Again, which people that's can right. check out at your website, Um the, One thing I just want to f finish with, with this on my end, and then I'll let you close this out. If the, the, the difference, rather, of life in Christ, being close to God, and one without, is we're both going to walk through the valleys. It's right there in Psalm 23, you are with me. That's right. We're not promised that we won't be in valleys, that we won't have dark times. Uh, and like Leanna said, you, you don't sit down. You don't sit on your grief. You walk through your grief, you know. Um, but the difference, the real core difference is that God is with us in the valley. He does not forsake us. And that's, I think that's the key right there. So, Leanna, thank you for being with us. Final thoughts. I love that. We, we are not alone or forgotten in our suffering. We are not alone or forgotten or abandoned in the questions and doubts that we have. And if you need a hand reaching towards you right now and you can't quite see it, I just encourage you to read about my story in the book. And I think you could probably find some encouragement and some hope in this story and maybe even find a little bit of your own story in it as well. Absolutely. And that that is our hope for all of you guys watching today. Thank you again, Leanna, for being with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Check out the book. It is available now. It is called Hope Anyway. It looks just like that, and you can get it wherever you buy books, or you can get it on our website at leannatankersley.com. Always. And we will come, come back will tomorrow be. and the next day and next week and offer you more hopes. We invite you to come back. Be sure to follow or subscribe. Live Today TV. We'll see you again next time. Nobody can prevent you from doing the will of God.